And check out the view from the CTV Skywatch camera. We're looking out to the west, and yeah, there's some raindrops on the lens there. There'll be more there in the overnight hours. 12 degrees is where we're at right now. We are seeing rain. We got to 12 degrees, which is our high, at 2 p.m. this afternoon, stayed there. 9 degrees was our low, and we hit that at 9 a.m. So we haven't had a lot of variation as far as temperatures go. And all over the province, uh, you know, it's cooler than certainly than what it was yesterday. And we've got some single-digit numbers here as well. What we're watching watching is, would you believe this is an area of high pressure that's actually trying to make its way into southern Alberta. That's why our barometric pressure is rising. What it's doing, it's compressing that flow of precipitation along the Continental Divide into northern BC. There are warnings in the Fort Nelson area, the BC Peace area. They're also seeing heavy rainfall warnings. So you can see the trajectory, the flow of that precipitation is trying to move further north. And there's a second system that's just south of Saskatchewan, uh, rotating low that's actually putting uh, Regina and Saskatoon into that eye of the storm storm for tonight and tomorrow and then Winnipeg uh, east of Winnipeg is looking at heavy rainfall as well from that second system so this area of high pressure continuing to push in is what's going to continue to move this further north and compress all of that precipitation not to say we're going to be out of the rainfall tonight or tomorrow tomorrow we have that chance of shower activity but it's not going to be that constant pulsating rain that we saw today so this will be lessening as we get into uh, Friday and specifically on Saturday that area of high pressure will be right over us. So we're looking at a pretty sunny day on Saturday and even Sunday is looking fairly stable to start with, but then that daytime heating triggering some afternoon chance of afternoon and evening shower activity. That's the way it looks right now. 11 degrees in St. John's. We've got very nice temperatures through the Maritimes, but they're looking at mixed conditions. They have a risk of thunderstorm. No warnings in this area, but just with that daytime heating triggering some late day convective energy. And then you've got Winnipeg areas east of it into northern Ontario looking at some heavy rainfall, but the heaviest will be right along the Saskatchewan uh, Manitoba border in through uh, Nipawa area specifically. Could see 75 millimeters in total by this time tomorrow. 17 degrees in Regina, 22 in Saskatoon, 17 in Edmonton. If you want sunshine, it's the extreme northern areas of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba for the next 12 hours, uh, although they will be in darkness, but they have clearer skies there. We've got uh, some rain on the coast in Victoria and Vancouver, and they had a sun and cloud mix in both Yellowknife and Whitehorse this afternoon. East Kootenai, you're looking at showers tonight, 7 for a low, 17 for a high tomorrow, scattered showers, and then clearing skies as you get towards the evening hours. Crow's Nest Pass, uh, probably 5 to 10 more millimeters of rain tonight. Windy tonight, 7 for a low, 14 for a high tomorrow. Uh, mainly cloudy and then some afternoon scattered showers, but evening clearing skies. Medicine Hat, mainly cloudy tomorrow, 18 degrees for a daytime high for you. And here in Lethbridge, we're looking at uh, that scattered shower activity continuing tonight. Risk of a thunder shower, lows of 9. And then tomorrow, mainly cloudy. Chance of that morning after afternoon shower activity, but we are expecting to see clearing skies as we head into the evening hours. Northwest winds at 20 kilometers per hour. So tomorrow is kind of a transitional day, some leftover shower activity. We see clearing late in the day. Saturday is looking pretty stable right now. Highs of anywhere from 20 to 22 degrees, and then 18 degrees on Sunday. Chance of that shower activity, fairly cloudy, more cloud than sun. And then we've got a second system moving in on Monday. More rain in the forecast. That continues until Wednesday. Wednesday, and then it's looking right now like a pretty good weekend coming up next week again. So Dory story, we talked about the uh, first day of convocation at the University of Lethbridge. So this story ties in very nicely. Ceremonial maces were originally used as weapons to protect royalty and carried by a bodyguard. By the 14th century, they became more decorative and eventually went out of use as a weapon, about the time that heavy suits of armor went out of fashion. The University of Lethbridge Mace made a road trip to Wilson Middle School to help the students learn about the symbolism of the mace, how it's used during convocation, and about its history. Dr. John Doan is the current Chief Marshal and Mace Bearer during convocation ceremonies at the University of Lethbridge. On this day, he arranged for this piece of U of L history to make its first trip ever to a school. I think it's really exciting. I think it gives us a chance to, to show some of the ceremony and, and history that's associated with, with university and academia. And, and it's an interesting opportunity to engage the students that way. They're interested in uh, the symbolism of the mace and, and what it means for us. So it's a great chance to show them that. But it's a good opportunity 
opportunity to show them uh, that's only part of universe and we have you know exciting new research and and, and uh, fantastic worlds to discover while you're at university as well so it really can bring both those messages teacher jocelyn shields thought it was an excellent way to really spark the students interest i think that there's this great big world out there and when you have grade six kids they don't know much of it and so just showing them this makes them think university and convocation just learning that word because they always heard the word graduation i think that it's a huge thing for these kids to suddenly realize there's just so much going on and there's so many powerful symbols around me that i just didn't notice before it just sort of, sort of opens their eyes to you know these endless possibilities after the questions were all answered i asked bailey morrison if the presentation did indeed plant the seeds of curiosity it makes me feel like i want to find out more of it like research it more and see like all the details about it by the sounds of the applause a very fun and educational presentation go to the website to learn more about the uofl dory's story brought to you by langenberg optical once again voted best of the best